Apex Legends has taken the gaming world by storm, and in this video I'm going to take a look at one of my favourite characters in the game, Wraith. This character is one I've been using a whole lot, and it is probably one of the most entertaining characters to play. But the big issue is, if you're bad at playing this character, you are a real detriment to your team, and people will start getting annoyed at you. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the top tips and tricks in order to be a more effective Wraith player. Now to start off, for those that haven't played Wraith much or simply don't know, you are given three abilities, as with every single character. Number one, you have a passive. This ability lets you know if you're being watched. It's a passive ability, so you don't have to do anything. The game will automatically warn you with Wraith bringing out a couple of voice lines if she's being aimed at, she will say, there's someone aiming at you or something like that and it's kind of creepy the first couple of times you hear it but you do get used to it and it's very very useful because you could then bring in a slide or a little dodge just to ensure you're not going to be hit by that sniper or enemy player Secondly, you get a tactical ability called Into the Void. This allows you to phase into another dimension, you are invulnerable, and you also receive a small speed boost. It is worth noting, however, that the enemy team can see you because you leave a trail behind you and you have limited visibility whilst in that void tactical ability. I would make sure you use this carefully. It's incredibly powerful, but you do have to use it the right way. More on that later. Third, you have your Dimensional Rift. This is your ultimate ability. You can create a two-way portal where your team can use it, enemy teams can use it, you yourself can use it, even downed players can use it. It's incredibly powerful, but again, you have to use it in the right way. Otherwise, it can be a bit of a liability, and really, it can cause more harm than good. Essentially what you do is you stow your weapons away, you place a portal, you then run for around 10 seconds, there is a percentage timer that ticks down. It is based on the distance you cover, however if you're running it's around 10 seconds. You can then place the second portal and these two portals will link up for a maximum of 60 seconds. As I mentioned, any player can use them within those 60 seconds. Now before we go any further, some top tips that I suggest all the Wraith players take note of. Turn on your subtitles if you're struggling to hear Wraith's passive ability. She does say you're being watched or something similar fairly quietly, and if you're not quite catching it, turning on subtitles will help you here. You should always combine your tactical ability with your dimensional rift. So when you place your first portal, make sure you use your tactical ability to go invisible, we'll call it for now, and then you also get that speed boost, meaning you can place the two portals quickly it's very useful as well, especially if you're retreating because your team cannot be waiting for you to place these two portals. They need you to do it very quickly so they can jump in and escape. It's also great for those flanks. You want to be using your tactical ability to get through the zone without taking damage. Using that Into the Void tactical ability does mean you receive no damage at all. So if you're in the zone or you need to nip into the zone to grab something, etc., make sure that you use that ability whenever you can. It recharges fairly quickly too, so don't worry about it. The portal is there for both offensive and defensive strategies. I like to use it primarily for defensive strategies. I will place the portal next to a down teammate, run to a safe area, and then place the other portal. They can hop through into safety and I can revive them, or maybe there's a lifeline medic there. It's very, very useful indeed if used in that way. However, you can also use it to boost teammates into flanking positions. I quite often use it when we're in an engagement with maybe the final team in the match, or when I know there's one team fighting another team and we want to get behind them. These sort of maneuvers where you just want to split your team up, or maybe all of you want to get behind this enemy team. You can see a couple of examples of this in the background. It's very powerful if used correctly. One thing I would say with Wraith is it is very useful to play aggressive with her. This is quite a nice tactic as you get that tactical ability to jump into the void and whilst you're not completely invisible as I discussed earlier, you don't take damage. So if you're jumping from cover to cover and using that ability, you're so strong. 
Think about the loadout you have in this situation as well. If you're going for CQB engagements, you want to make sure that you've got weapons that can handle that. I quite enjoy taking an SMG or a shotgun and maybe teaming that up with something like the R301 carbine or maybe an M600 or even a Devotion if you have the right attachments. You can be very strong. Just base your loadout on your skill level and what you're comfortable with. Maybe you found something that works for you. Personally, I like to run with a Peacekeeper or an SMG, and then I'll run with a Carbine. Possibly, I'll run with a longer range weapon if needs be. You can trick enemy players quite well with Wraith. Just because you place a portal doesn't mean you have to use it, nor does it mean that it's just for you. Sometimes enemy players will almost be forced to use the portal you placed, and you can wait on the other side with a shotgun blast to the face. It's also worth noting that enemy Wraith players will do this to you as well. Don't always jump through a portal or follow someone through a portal. They might be doing it to trick you, and there'll be a couple of shotguns at the other end. You can fly through a portal and almost instantly turn back around if there is danger. You can also use your tactical ability to jump into that void the second you get out of the portal. You can't jump through a portal when using that tactical ability, by the way, but maybe you jump through a portal, there's someone there, you use your tactical ability straight away, jump back through the portal to safety. It's also great if you're a downed player to go through a portal, turn around and go straight back through it and keep jumping from side to side if you're not going to be picked up. Once you're in that portal, you can't be hit, and although you are at risk coming out the other side, it's great just to keep moving while your team gets back together. I have also not been able to link up the portal at either end of a zipline. If you hit your ultimate ability, you can't jump on a zipline, and as you can see in the background, I did try this and I died. If your energy runs out, you are automatically placing that portal as well. A great tip for anyone who's wondering about that. You just need to run until it runs out, but you can also place it for shorter distances. As I said, for rescuing teammates, I always place it literally just behind the nearest piece of safe cover. It's reducing the time taken to revive a teammate, and it's super useful. One tactic that I would say everyone needs to take into account is what sort of characters are you playing with? Are you playing with randoms, you don't really know who your team's going to be, or are you playing with a squad? If you're playing with a squad, it's worth taking into account the other players. I would always suggest taking a lifeline, especially if you're a team that tends to be quite aggressive and takes a lot of damage. The lifeline can heal really quickly, so it's a great character on its own, but also you get that healing and it's a medic, so it's always going to be good for keeping the team alive. A few good plays I've worked out so far, a few interesting plays I should say, there's probably way more tactical and high tier plays you can pull off, but Gibraltar's a really good one to run with Wraith, especially for defensive stuff. Once the shield goes up, you can portal from inside the shield, either to safety or on a flanking manoeuvre. Whenever an enemy team sees a Gibraltar shield, they automatically assume you're all in there hiding and healing. I often use that as a bit of a bait, so I'll get the teammate to drop the shield, will portal out of there behind, flank around the back of the enemy while they're looking at the shield that stays up for a little bit of time. We can take them out or we could maybe just escape. As I mentioned before, dropping a portal by lifeline and then bringing in that injured or trapped teammate, maybe even a down teammate, can speed up the time it takes to get your squad back on their feet. Bangalore has a really good smoke ability that is great for covering you whilst you try and get the second portal up. And I would also say that Caustic, although I haven't used him much, has that ability to set traps. It's really quite cool to place a trap by a portal so enemies almost don't want to follow you through it because they'll set off the gas trap. But it's just one of these little tactics that maybe you could implement. I don't know, maybe something a little tricky like that. It's not something I've experimented with. But there's so much that you can do in this game in terms of combining different players. So hopefully this little Wraith guide helped you out if you're struggling with this character or maybe you're looking for a couple of different tactics to get better at it i'm going to be looking at the other characters as well in this game i know a lot of my usual subscribers aren't used to apex legends guides or reviews or videos in general we're more of a battlefield channel but i am loving this game it's so much fun and with firestorm coming up i think it's great to get into that battle royale mentality but of course, I'll still be focusing on Battlefield 5 for the most part on this channel. Subscribe if you're new. As I said, there'll be more Apex Legends content on the way. And if you do like Battlefield, of course, stick around because there'll be much more of that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.